Since it started in 2021, people have been really curious about the James Webb Space Telescope. They're not so interested in the cool stuff it finds about old galaxies or how stars are born. Instead, they're super focused on one question. When will it find aliens? This might not seem like a crazy question. NASA really wants to find aliens, even if they're just tiny microbes on Mars or maybe some basic life in Europa's underground ocean. But while looking for aliens on Mars and Europa is still mostly guessing, the James Webb Telescope might find something sooner. Some scientists think it could discover signs of alien life as soon as next year. Welcome to Spaceverse, where we explore the wonders of the universe and dive deep into the mysteries of space. In today's video, we're delving into the tantalizing quest for extraterrestrial life. Ever since the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, there's been a buzz surrounding the possibility of detecting signs of alien life, especially on distant exoplanets like K2-18b. But is the discovery of a molecule like DMS enough to confirm the existence of aliens? Join us as we dissect the science, explore the challenges, and uncover the excitement of studying exoplanets like never before. Last September, scientists using the James Webb Telescope found something super interesting in the atmosphere of a faraway planet called K2-18b. They saw hints of water and maybe even a molecule that could mean life. They're planning to look at it again in 2024, and this could be the start of something really huge. But can we really trust these findings? Well, there are a lot of scientists who study planets who have doubts about these reports. This doubt brings up a big challenge for NASA. How can we be totally sure if we've actually found alien life? Among all the discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope, this one was huge, maybe the biggest yet. On September 12, 2023, a group of researchers from the University of Cambridge, led by Professor Niku Madhud Sahan, shared their findings from studying the exoplanet K2-18b. This planet sits about 120 light years away from us in the Leo constellation. K-18b caught the attention of scientists back in 2019 when the Hubble Space Telescope found hints of water vapor in its atmosphere. That's why the Cambridge team pointed the James Webb Telescope toward it. But what they discovered was beyond their expectations. Their results showed there's methane and CO2 in the atmosphere of this distant world, but not much ammonia. According to some theories, a big planet like K-18b would only have this mix of gases if its atmosphere was reacting with water below. This led to the idea that K2-18b might have a huge ocean, even bigger than any on Earth. But Professor Mahud Sahan's observations went even further. Along with methane and CO2, the James Webb Telescope also detected dimethyl sulfide, which is often called DMS. In simpler terms, let's hear what the Cambridge professor said to the BBC. On Earth, DMS is only made by living things. Most of it in Earth's air comes from tiny plants in the ocean, even though the team said they weren't completely sure about finding DMS and more checking was needed, the idea of alien plankton was too exciting for most news sources to ignore. And it's no wonder. NASA has been searching for life beyond Earth for decades. They're spending over $8 billion on the Mars Sample Return Mission to bring back stuff from Mars that might have signs of ancient tiny life. Next year, they're launching the $5 billion Europa Clipper to Jupiter's moon Europa, hoping to find places where living things could survive. So the thought that the James Webb Telescope might have found a sign of life on another planet got a lot of people dreaming. Maybe some were a bit too eager to believe it. But we'll talk about why we should be careful about jumping to conclusions later in this video. For now, let's just understand two important things. What's K-18b, and how do we even figure out what's in its air? I mean, it's really far away. To explain, let's imagine a quick trip through space, leaving Earth behind and flying across the vast emptiness until we arrive at a solar system 120 light years away. In this system, we find one of the most interesting planets humans have ever seen. So, what's K-18b? Well, in simple terms, it's a planet far away that's bigger than Earth, but smaller than Neptune. It's about 2.6 times wider than Earth, a size we don't have anything like in our own solar system. That makes it hard to guess what K2-18b is really like. We're used to rocky planets being similar to Earth or Mars, and big gas planets being a bit like Jupiter or Saturn. But with planets like K2-18b, there's nothing nearby to compare them to. It's like trying to figure out what's going on at a party in the dark without being able to see. But we do have some good guesses about K2-18b. For instance, we know it circles around its star, called K2-18, in what's called the habitable zone. That means if there's water on its surface, it could be liquid, just like on Earth. 
but KD18b isn't at the same distance from its star as Earth is from the Sun. See, our Earth is one astronomical unit or AU away from the Sun, but KD18b is only about 0.16 AU away from its star. To put that in perspective, it's way closer than Mercury is to our Sun. It's so close that a year on KD18b only lasts about 33 days, and it's so close that the heat from its star would burn its surface to a crisp. Thankfully, K218, its star, is cooler than our sun, so they can be close without boiling away any surface water instantly. And that's really important because recent ideas suggest that planets like K218b might have a lot of water on their surface. Back in 2021, Professor Niku Madhud Sahan, the same guy whose team might have found DMS, wrote a paper in the Astrophysical Journal about sub-Neptune planets like K218b. Basically, he argued that they could be a whole new kind of planet. These planets might be covered in huge oceans beneath a thick atmosphere of hydrogen. Madhud Sahan calls them heen worlds, a mix of hydrogen and ocean. If they're real, these water worlds could be totally different from anything we've seen before. They could be up to 10 times heavier than Earth and twice as wide. They'd be super hot, like 200 degrees Celsius hot. But instead of being all steam, most of these heen planets would be covered in a massive layer of water around a small rocky core. This huge ocean could make up almost all of the planet's mass, and in theory, it might be able to support basic life like tiny microbes. As a nice bonus, these planets with thick atmospheres offer a wider habitable zone around their star compared to rocky planets like Earth. It's kind of like how people in Canada can stroll around in t-shirts when temperatures would make others freeze. Since there are a lot of sub-Neptune planets out there and they have this bigger habitable zone, Heen Worlds could be the best spots to search for life. Plus, bigger planets are easier to study from far away. That's why Mahad Sahan's team used the James Webb Telescope to look at K-18b. Maybe their decision will soon prove that Heen Worlds really exist, but it's not going to be simple. Even with a powerful tool like the James Webb Telescope, finding ocean worlds is super hard. In January and April of 2023, the telescope looked at the star K-18 for a total of 5 hours while K-18b passed in front of it. As K-18b did this, the light from the star went through the planet's atmosphere. The telescope captured this light, which helped Mahad Sahin's team figure out what the atmosphere was made of. Basically, they looked at how the light split into different colors, like a rainbow. If certain colors were missing, it meant chemicals in the planet's atmosphere absorbed them, telling researchers what's there. And that's how we can figure out what molecules are on planets far, far away. It's not as easy as looking at a spectrum and saying, hey, we found aliens. Every discovery comes with something called a sigma value. For us non-scientists, sigma value basically tells you how sure the researchers are that what they found is real and not just a mistake. Imagine it like this. If you find something with a one sigma signal, there's a good chance it's not real, like your high school girlfriend from Canada. A two sigma signal is more believable but still might not be true. But when you reach five sigma, it's almost definitely true, like me being bold, something really weird would have to happen for it not to be true. Scientists usually need a discovery to be at least 3 sigma before they believe it. In the case of K-18b, the James Webb Telescope's detection of methane in the atmosphere was at 5 sigma, so we're pretty sure it's there. But detecting CO2 was at 3 sigma, which is borderline but okay for now. The telescope didn't find any confident evidence of water vapor though, it turns out the water vapor Hubble saw in 2019 was actually a mistake, just a mix up with methane. Mahad Sahan's team is excited about the idea that KD18b might be a heen world because the mix of molecules in its atmosphere matches the theory. But that doesn't mean we know for sure there's an ocean there. As astrophysicist Elizabeth Tasker explained, we haven't found water on KD18b. All we can say is that there's no reason to think it doesn't have an ocean. Yeah, all that caution can be frustrating, but that's just how science goes. As much as we'd love to get excited about finding distant ocean worlds, we have to be careful and follow the lead of real astrophysicists. And that's even more true for the idea that the James Webb Telescope might have found a molecule linked to life. Early next year, the James Webb Telescope will focus on KD18b once again. When the planet passes in front of its star for about 2.5 hours, Professor Mahud Sahan's team will try to strengthen their previous findings, aiming to provide stronger evidence of a global ocean and to detect the life-suggesting molecule DMS again. They'll use Webb's mid-infrared instruments, which are good at finding DMS. Finding confirmation of this could mean finding alien life, so people are understandably excited. 
But they'll be cautious because the original DMS detection wasn't very confident. It had a sigma value of 1, which means it's like having a fake girlfriend from Canada or, as scientist Joe Anabasto put it, a very tentative detection. Still, even a not-so-certain discovery of something that might mean aliens is worth investigating more. Confirming space plankton would be one of the biggest discoveries ever, showing that life can exist beyond Earth, hinting that it might be common elsewhere too. But even if the James Webb Telescope finds strong evidence of DMS next year, scientists can just jump to conclusions and say, yay, space creatures. First, they'd have to make sure there's no natural, non-living reason for it. While DMS is only linked to living things on Earth, that might not be the case on K-18b. The main reason Hain worlds, if they're real, will be so different is that we can't assume anything about them based on what we know from Earth. When I pop up on your YouTube talking about ocean worlds, you might think of that Kevin Costner movie and imagine a planet similar to Earth, but covered mostly in water. But Hain worlds are way weirder than that. Astrophysicist Ethan Siegel explained it well on Big Think. He said that any planet with more than twice Earth's mass and 1.3 times its radius can't be rocky like Earth. If it's bigger than 1.75 times Earth's radius, it's more like Neptune than Earth. Neptune is wild, it rains diamonds and has super high pressures that create crazy stuff like hot, dense fluids and maybe even oceans of super hot water. But Neptune's ocean is way too hot and pressurized for life, it's a nightmare. For planets similar in size, if just a tiny bit of their mass is hydrogen and helium, the pressure on the surface could be thousands of times greater than Earth's, with temperatures in the thousands of degrees. So, K-18b probably isn't like an Earth with oceans. And that's a problem because if it's so different from Earth, we can just assume that a molecule like DMS, which is a sign of life on Earth, means there's life on K-18b. As Elizabeth Tasker said, we need a lot more info about conditions on that planet to be sure that a biosignature on Earth couldn't happen without life. And we haven't studied K-18b or Heen worlds enough yet to know for sure. Confirming the presence of DMS in K-18b's atmosphere would be a huge deal and could kickstart more studies. So, the James Webb Telescope searching for it next year is still super exciting. But it also means that finding alien life might be harder than we thought, especially when we consider all the other challenges with Heen planets. Remember back in September 2020 when there was that big news about finding a molecule in Venus's atmosphere that could be a sign of life? Well, it turned out to be a bit of a letdown. Despite the hype, there's still no solid evidence for it. This cautionary tale makes everyone more careful about claims like finding DMS on K-18b. But there are other issues too, like the risk of runaway greenhouse effects on Heen planets. Because of their hydrogen-heavy atmospheres, these planets react to sunlight differently than Earth. Put one with a typical atmosphere into Earth's orbit, and recent studies show that the oceans would boil away. To have any chance of liquid water, you'd need to move the planet's way out beyond Mars. But even then, we haven't found any Heen planets in this habitable zone yet, not even K-18b, even though its star is cooler. So, if this new research is correct, K-18b might still be too close to support liquid water. Even if we confirm there's an ocean on K-18b, it doesn't mean it's teeming with life. It might not even be livable. The problem is the weight of all that water in a planet's wide ocean. As Elizabeth Tasker explains, a huge global ocean puts so much weight on the planet that it shuts down the geology forming under high-pressure deep sea. It seals off the rocky parts of the planet and cuts off the carbon silicate cycle. Without this cycle, there's no way to regulate greenhouse gases to keep the planet temperate and provide nutrients from silicate rocks. Basically, without these nutrients, there's nothing for life to eat, no chemical soup to kickstart life. While it's possible that meteorites could bring in enough nutrients, it's also possible that any heating planets out there are just lifeless water worlds. We won't know until we can properly study one and figure out what's going on. So, while finding DMS on a watery exoplanet is cool, it's unlikely to mean we've found alien life anytime soon, at least not without a lot more research. And we'll be honest, we were really hoping to tell you that we're on the brink of discovering funky space fish. But as the saying goes, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. And as we've shown, DMS alone might not be enough evidence. But that doesn't mean we have to end on a down note, because whether there are aliens or not, studying KD-18b is still super interesting. Thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we're finally getting to know some of the different types of planets out there, massive worlds much bigger than Earth, just waiting to be explored. 
were slowly uncovering their mysteries, one observation at a time. Maybe these worlds are in inhabitable nightmares, or maybe the Heen Worlds theory is right, and there are living ocean worlds all around us. The point is, we won't know until we study them whether we find life or not. Professor Mahud Sahan's team is doing us all a favor by digging into these mysteries. Maybe someday soon, another scientist using the James Webb telescope will find a real biosignature and get to say, yep, it's aliens. Let's hope that day comes sooner rather than later. And that's it. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic adventure here at Spaceverse. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to keep exploring the wonders of the universe with us, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, the universe is vast and full of mysteries, so stay curious and we'll see you next time on Spaceverse.